Welcome to another Authors and Women at Google event. Today we welcome to Google Susan Bulkley Butler, author of Become the CEO of You Incorporated. Um, I was really happy to have lunch with Susan uh, and I'm really excited about the talk because she's just so forthcoming about her experiences and um, I hope you guys will learn a lot from her. Um, now it's kind of my turn to uh, brag a little bit about her. Susan is an accomplished author and speaker facilitating workshops based on her business philosophy and experience, which she captures in the book that you guys have here. And this is Susan's first copy. As you can see, it's very tattered. Um, through her book, Susan provides step-by-step -step model for achieving balance, improving your life, and achieving your career goals. Susan developed her business philosophy in part from her experience as the first woman partner and ultimately first woman managing partner at the office of the CEO at Accenture one of the world's largest consulting and technology companies. She was recognized for her commitment to educating and coaching women and girls through her Institute for Leadership Excellence at Purdue University, her alma mater. Uh, we'll have some time for Q&A at the end of the talk and also some time for book signing. So if you have any questions, uh, please line up at the microphone over there so the folks on YouTube on VC can hear your questions. And so let's welcome Susan. Thank you. Thanks so much, Pepe, and I can't tell you how excited I am to be here today with all you Googlers here uh, in, in uh, Mountain View and also in other sites in the United States and the world, maybe. And those that are joining us on YouTube, welcome, and I have, I'm just really, really excited about being here and to share with you some concepts in my book, Become the CEO of You, Inc. Now, today, I really want to focus on the future. But the important thing is, is that I want you, throughout this whole 40 minutes or so, to think about your future. That's what this is all about. Who is it that you want to be? And it's not a finite thing, because it'll change. And I'll tell you how it changes, how it's changed throughout my life. But we're talking about your, your future, a special journey that you're on, a special journey that, that I can talk to you today about making it happen rather than letting it happen to you. Being in charge, being responsible for who it is you want to be. I began my professional career uh, when I graduated from Purdue University. But my special journey really started, obviously, with my parents. Coming from a small town, Abingdon, Illinois, a city of 3,500 people. And my parents always said to me, Susan, you can do anything you set your mind to do. And I want all of you in this audience today to remember that. And if you haven't heard that from anybody, let me be the first to tell you, you can do anything you set your mind to do. And hopefully after today, you'll go away to make things happen for you rather than let things happen to you. So my idea was, Junior in high school, I was going to go to Galesburg, be, come back to Galesburg, Illinois, and have a women's dress shop. How I came up with that idea, I have not the foggiest idea, but when somebody said, Susan, where, where are you going to school? And I told them what I wanted to be, this person said, well, you should go to Purdue University, the School of Home Economics, if you can believe that. So that's where I started. Home Economics, Purdue University, with the career aspiration of having my own store. Well, things do change. And with the help of my team of professors, family, just my own gut feel of how things were going in home economics, I decided that wasn't where I wanted to be. And so, luckily, I was able to change into something that was very exciting, and I graduated from the uh, Craner School of Industrial Management at Purdue. And I went from there being hired as the first woman professional by Arthur Anderson one of the big eight accounting firms in the old days. And of course, uh, Pepe mentioned that I uh, was the first woman partner at what's now Accenture, a $20 billion global management uh, consult technology and consulting firm. So after 36 years, I, I, I developed a very successful career. And I have to say that I, in fact, became the CEO of Me, Inc. Now, I wasn't that early on. And I had a defining moment. And the defining moment was when I thought I was going to get promoted to manager, and I wasn't. And I thought, well, now 
I did everything everybody told me to do, so why aren't I getting promoted? And the, the answer was, first of all, I didn't know what that next position needed, what roles and responsibilities I needed for that next position. And I hadn't figured out what my peers were doing, the kinds of experiences that my peers were getting that I wasn't. And I became, I was a real techie in that time, and I needed to have more business experience. So that's when I suddenly said, Susan, you need to take charge. You need to be the CEO of U Inc. and take responsibility for who it is you want to be. Fortunately, I'm in a, a, a wonderful position now that with my experience from Purdue and from Accenture, that I am now running uh, my own Institute for the Development of Women Leaders. Uh, I was the president, and somebody said, why are you the president? Why aren't you the CEO? Well, I gave myself a promotion, and I'm now the CEO of my institute. Um, but it's an opportunity for me to give forward, give forward to future generations, as others did for me. And that's what I'm all about. That's what my book's all about, is to work with people like all of you in this audience today to help you achieve the dreams that you want to achieve and to be able to make things happen for you rather than let things happen to you. So as CEO of Me Inc., I took the necessary steps to make the accomplishments happen. And I continue as CEO of Me Inc. every day. I, I, I'm still thinking about who am, who am I today and who do I want to be in the future. But now let's talk about your special journey. That's what this is all about today and about fulfilling your dreams. So what are the dreams that you're reaching for? What is it that you want to do with your life? Eleanor Roosevelt reminds us that the future belongs in the, to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. So you have to believe in your dreams, that they're OK. You can dream. They're there for a reason. And Napoleon Hill defines it a little different way about a goal. A goal is a dream with a deadline. I encourage you all to believe in the beauty of your dreams. And hopefully after today, you will have the tools and techniques, having what I'm going to talk about and also with my book, um, as a, I'm, a, I'm a mentor to everybody reading my book, by the way. So as, as my book is a tool that you too will believe in your dreams and make them happen. Because I've found that underlying any, any particular accomplishment of a goal, you need to be in charge and you need to think about these four steps, which I call my make it happen model. Now, some people will say, well, what do you mean by becoming the CEO of You Inc? And I mentioned that I am a mentor to my readers. But let me just uh, refer to page nine in the book. And it's in the title that says, You Are the CEO of You Inc. Whatever your goal may be, the lessons I provide in these pages will give you the tools that will enable you to turn your dreams into reality. How do I know? They're the same strategies that propelled me to a top executive in the CEO suite of one of the world's largest companies. So I share this with you. We'll refer to the book from time to time. Uh, but the next point I want to say is, OK, you need to take responsibility for you. I'll tell you what, is what you need to do to become a CEO. And you may or may not accept that responsibility. But hopefully, by the end of this talk, you will. I also want to then have define the com components of my Make It Happen model. And that begins on page 10, where I refer, to you, refer you to, um, let me just see where I am. On page 10, um, we also talk about being in charge of being the CEO, and the fact that you are the best candidate to be in charge of who it is you want to be, because, and I know you, you are all familiar with, with the word outsourcing. Anybody not know that word? If you're not going to take responsibility for who you are, then who have you outsourced this to? Because someone 
is making you the way you are by what they ask you to do, the, the expectations that they've been providing you all the time you're growing up. So have you outsourced it? Are you letting things happen to you? So the model begins, the definition of the model begins on page 17. So if you would refer to that, step one in my make it happen model is to envision your future. Determine where it is you want to go. And we'll talk about these in a little bit more detail later, but I just wanted to, there are four simple steps. Envision your future. The second step is to recruit a team to support you to make your vision a reality. We don't, none of us got to where we are today by ourselves. If you think about that, you didn't get to where you are today by yourself. So why is it that we think we have to do take care of our career by ourselves. I hope that today we'll change that view. Develop your plan. Determine what you need to do uh, and how to do it. And step number four is navigate the journey. Every day, every day, everything you do. So you're taking one step forward to where it is you want to be every day. Now, this isn't rocket scientists. And these four steps, I guarantee you're very familiar with already because of the kind of work you do. You do project work in some cases. You begin with the end in mind. What is the result of this project? You get your team together that's going to help you deliver on that project. You put the plan together so you know what the steps are and where you are at any point. And then you begin to navigate the journey every day. So you, you work that plan every day. All I'm saying is, let's translate it to yourself and to where you want to, your end in mind. So I created my book for people like you to, one, talk to you about how to become a CEO, and two, to introduce you to the model. So let me just um, go into each one of these four steps of my model in a little bit more detail. The first one is to define where it is you want to go. What is your aspiration? Beginning with the end in mind, because if you don't have an end in mind, the old uh, motto is, any road will take you there because you don't know where you're going. Now, an interesting thing is, and I'll talk about this later, but one of the things I did in my book was I actually wrote my eulogy. And Pepe talked to me about the fact that in one of her classes, they were, uh, one of her assignments was to write her eulogy. Now, it may be, really weird to think about that. But again, it's beginning with the end in mind, and it's helping you to say, OK, now, how is it that I do want to be remembered? What is the legacy that I want to leave on this earth? Now, I can say I read it again last night, and I have some changes to make, but that's OK. I need to update it. So beginning with the end in mind, because this special journey you're on really is all about making your dreams happen. So what are these special dreams? And what are the things that you need to do and to make sure that your, they're your dreams and not those dreams that have been on a to-do list provided by others? Then we need to talk about your team. Who's on your team? One of the very important people on your team is a mentor. How many of you have a mentor? Have you thought about that? Do you have mentors? Everybody have a mentor? I see some heads that are shaking no. And I would encourage all of you to think about who you can get on your team. And maybe it's me. I'm a virtual mentor. Maybe it's somebody that you meet in a meeting that you really connect with. And it's not somebody that's just going to be there every day. It's not somebody that that isn't going to change. But you need somebody, a confidant, to say, OK, this is where I want to go. Does that sound reasonable? This is what just happened to me today. You know, who, do I talk, who can I talk to just to get it out? Family, friends, your supervisor, perhaps, your peers, people that are in other parts of the company or in other industries that you want to bring in because you value their input. So you need a team. This team is going to be maybe role, uh, role models for you. They're going to open doors for you. I talked to an individual the other day, and she just got assigned to this project, uh, this committee, 
for the second year in a row. And I said, OK, now you've been on this committee for a year, and you've done that, this and so. Now what is it that you want to achieve for yourself? What's in it for me, the Whiffen factor? What is it that you want to achieve for yourself being on this committee the second year? And who do you want to meet? Who are the people that can help further your career that's on that committee? So the team is like a board of directors. Every company, every CEO has a board of directors and a board of advisors. And this is what I'm talking about, the team. Thirdly is the plan. Here's where you want to go. Here's where you are. How, do you, how's the, how are you going to get there? What are the plans? What are the uh, interim uh, deliverables so you know that you're making progress? And then, uh, beginning with chapter 5, which refer to page 65, I talk about navigating the journey. And this is every day, every day. You're not only the CEO of you, Inc., but you're also your chief marketing officer. You're the chief financial officer. You're the one that is thinking about your product. You need to say, OK, here's your product, your skills, your, the responsibilities that you've had. Here's your product today, but what does that product need to look like tomorrow to achieve what it is you want to achieve? So you're the one that needs to every day say, OK, here's what somebody else wants me to do based on uh, my experiences. Now, how, how am I going to benefit from that? How am I going to build a skill or develop my product in such a way that it's going to move me forward? Because you're investing a valuable asset, which is your time. So um, the important thing is that, that you've got your team, you know where you're going, and you've got your plan, and you know where you're, where that, how that's going to take you, and then you've got to navigate. So let me just move on for a moment, because your special journey, have you really ever thought about, how many do New Year's resolutions? How many still have that same New Year's resolution? Oh, some good hands. Thank you. That's, that's, that's rare. I mean, there are quite a few that start out the year with a New, a New Year's resolution, but today they're normally um, forgotten. Well, what I want you to think about is your special journey. And if you would be so uh, short, I don't want to say short-sighted, but to think about December 31, 2008, and what is it that you want to achieve being CEO of U Inc. in the next nine months? What is it you want to achieve in the next nine months? And you can also think about, well, if you want to take this assignment of writing your eulogy or writing your legacy, that might be another way of saying, OK, here's what I want to be known for. Now how am I going to get there? I thought I would just share with you for a moment uh, some things in my eulogy, just to give you an idea. And again, to refer to it, it's on pages um, 144 and 145. But, it, but this says, Susan was, a, was a, quite the leader. She was a role model, a mentor, developer of people, and always cared for those who were around her. She was helping people be all they can be. This is why she started the Institute for the Development of Women Leaders, to help women achieve the, their dreams. She said she wanted to impact zillions of women and girls. That's what I said to the dean of the University of Arizona Business School when he, I retired. And he said, Susan, what do you want to say you've achieved in five years? I had no idea. I said, Mark, that's a question I ask all of you, but nobody asked me that question. Well, I didn't have an answer, and I felt pretty guilty. But by the end of that lunch, I said, I want to have impacted zillions of women and girls. And for you men in the audience, I'll include you too. But the important thing is, is that's how I'm investing my time. I figure out how it is I want to use my time based on that. So 
this goes on to say that you know, thousands of read Susan's words and, and received uh, her call to action to make things happen for you rather than let things happen to you. Now, here's my update because there is something that's very in interesting because I say in here that Susan fulfilled one of her aspirations, which is to change the look and feel of academia so that there are more women as faculty, deans, presidents, et cetera. And my new edition, I said I had to update it, my new edition is, we no longer talk about how few women are in the senior leadership positions, at, positions in um, Fortune 50 and Fortune 500 companies. Women are a significant percentage of our leadership teams. That is one goal that I am diligently working on every day, is how do we get more women like yourselves, more men like yourself. The men, you have a, more, a better opportunity than many women. But how do we get a more diverse group of people up into the senior ranks of our organizations? And I hope that I'm able to achieve that by the time I leave this planet. So that's my eulogy. That's what I'm hoping that my story will, will, the ending to my story. But what's the ending to your story? Is it a happy ending? Why not create a happy ending to your story so you feel good about everything you're doing every day? Now, that happy ending may change, but you're in charge of that happy ending and making it happen. So being a CEO, taking responsibility for who it is you want to be, and spending time. And I have to congratulate all of you that are here today. I know you have a thousand other things, but you took an hour to say, I'm going to work on me. I'm going to invest time in me today. I'm going to invest time on developing my career today. So thank you for this. But how often do you do this? Now, you can say, this is all great, Susan, and we need all of this all the time to keep us going. But how often do you do this? Invest your time in you to make things happen. If we're not, if we're not doing that, remember to think about, well, who have you outsourced who it is you want to be to? So remember, every day brings you one step closer to your end in mind. And and I want to say that I hope that there's one or two things that you take from today that you will do differently based on your career, based on you, based on being the CEO of you, that you will do differently when you walk out of this room and go back to all the to-dos that you have waiting for you um, at your desk. But. Let's talk about your dreams for a moment. And let's go back to this question that I asked you about what is it that you want to say you've accomplished by December 31, 2008? Or if, if you want to take a longer term view, you know, the next three to five years, like I was asked, what do you want to say you've accomplished in five years? Well. I know that you have enough to do on your, on your um, to-do list, but let me give you an assignment. The assignment is to send me an email and dated January 1, 2009, and say, Susan, you want to know something? This is what just happened through 2008. And this is how I did it. Now, why do I want you to sit down and write it? Because it becomes real. If you j I mean, there are things that I can just think about in my head, but I forget them, too. But if you write it down, you're going to commit yourself to it, hopefully. If you send it to me and others and start talking about, well, this is where I want to be, you're committing yourself to to it even more. And I might even say close to, you know, October saying, well, how you doing? How you doing on your, on your goal? And giving you a nudge. And maybe you won't forget it like some of you that, that uh, 
started your New Year's resolutions. Second thing, once you then figure out your aspiration, who's on your team? Who are the kinds of people that you need to help you make this happen? People here at Google, people outside of Google, I don't know where they come from. Maybe it's people that you meet in some networking event that you say, oh, they're doing exactly what I want to do. Let's, let's start a conversation. So who's on your team to make that happen? Reach out to your advisors. Reach out to people and say, could I have a bit of your time? I'd like to under better understand what it is you do. I'd like to understand the roles and responsibilities you have. People love to talk. People like to help people with their careers. Just like I said to Pepe, I mean, we've gotten to know one another with a phone conversations quite a bit. And over lunch today, who knows what will happen as a result of this um, interaction. Then to create the plan. How is it that you're going to take yourself from where you are today to where you want to be tomorrow? What does your product need to look like? What does your image need to look like? After all, you're responsible for the packaging of your product. I mean, Google certainly has some packaging. They have a brand. Well, what's your brand? You're responsible for that. And how do you need to change your packaging from the role you have today to the role that you have tomorrow or that you want to be achieve, you want tomorrow? And you need to market yourself to help make that happen. And these are all the things that you do during you know, the navigation process. And that's why I say the navigation process happens every day. Something that you do today is going to help you achieve take one step towards achieving your aspiration tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. I have to tell you a story about me. And, and people have asked, well, what are the defining moments in your career, Susan? Well, one was the defining moment when I became CEO of me when I didn't get promoted when I thought I was going to get promoted. The second one was um, when I got a divorce. And I'd become accustomed to, to career family and said to myself, hmm, Susan, is there somebody out here that's going to contribute their check? You know, so you're another two-career family, and I didn't have anybody over there. So, well, Susan, how are you going to do it? And that's when I started thinking about, well, where is my career going? And thirdly, is once I started thinking about that, amazingly, an amazing thing happened about two partners at Anderson Consulting said, Susan, you can be a partner. And I said, I can? I mean, I was here. They were here. There's a lot of gap between that, you know, where I was today and being a partner in a few years. But nobody had ever said anything about that. And I certainly wasn't doing anything about it. But they planted the seeds. So they became part of my team. They planted the seeds. And my whole mentality was, how do I get from where I am today as a manager to where I want to be in a few years as a partner? So it, it's just some little comment like that. And I hope you've got people that are helping you with that. And I hope you're helping your own people with that to help them achieve what it is they want to achieve. So we've got a, I've got a lot of uh, tips in. Uh, part two of the book about how to navigate your journey every day. Uh, one of the things is I said you were in charge of marketing. Well, how much networking do you do? Or are you just with the same people all the time? Or do you put yourself in an environment where you're meeting new people and understanding new people and what they do and how they do it, etc.? How do you work the crowd? I was telling Pepe that I was in an interesting situation just this last week. There was a woman there at this meeting at Purdue, which is, I, I mean, I go to these kinds of meetings all the time. But somebody talked to me about how Carolyn was working the crowd. Carolyn was just an, was given an honorary doctorate degree, and she happened to have been in the Clinton uh, administration. And she was unbelievable. I mean, I watched her after somebody said that. She was unbelievable. And she, her answer was, I learned from the expert. 
I learned from Bill Clinton. Well, what that did for me is I learned from that conversation because I need to do better at working the crowd. As successful as I've been, I need to do better because when I'm in an environment, I lean to the people that I know. I, I, I you know, have a hard time going up to new people. Or there's this conversation going on and you hate to butt in, right? Because you don't know what they're talking about, etc. But I learned from that experience that I need to do better at networking. Networking is a very exciting opportunity, exciting way to learn from other people, to get advice and counsel, to get some people on your team, as an example. Also, I mentioned the idea of your product and the idea of your image. Now, just from that standpoint, you all had a 30-second image of me. I mean, in 30 seconds, you had one image, if you saw me before this started. Uh, now you have a different image of me. After you read the book, you may have a third image of me. And I hope it's positive. But it's up to you to say, OK, what image do I want to leave in that 30 seconds? And how do you want to be remembered by somebody that has just met you? And that's important. And as I say, you know, Google has a brand. And other companies have brands. What's your brand? And what's the image that you want to project? Another way is to think about your 30-second elevator speech. If, somebody, if you're introduced to somebody for the first time, you have 30 seconds to, introduce, to make an introduction of yourself. What would you say? Another assignment. Think about your 30-second elevator speech. Think about what it is you would say. Because what this does is it opens doors, opportunities, for the other person to say, oh, I hear you're doing this at Google. You know, tell me more. Well, perhaps you can't tell them more, but, but, um, but it might give an opportunity for a further conversation. So look, think about your 30-second elevator speech. And in fact, practice it so it rolls off your tongue. I'm Susan Butler. I'm the CEO of the Susan Buckley Butler Institute for the Development of Women Leaders. I started this six years ago after my career, my 36-year career at Arthur Anderson, Anderson Consulting, and Accenture. As the first woman hire Arthur, from Arthur Anderson, the first woman partner at Anderson Consulting, and, and completing my, my career with, see, I need to practice, completing my career in the, as managing partner of the office of the CEO and helping take Anderson Consulting uh, onto the New York Stock Exchange through an IPO uh, with Joe Forehand as the CEO. Pretty exciting time. And now what I'm doing is I'm investing my, my time to help women, to help everyone achieve what it is they want to achieve. Now you can tell I could polish that up a bit. But that's the general thing. You have an idea of who it is I am, and there's opportunities for me, for you to ask me questions as a result of it. Your 30-second elevator speech is important to think about. Um, so with that, after you've decided your dream, your aspiration, you've taken on the responsibility of CEO of you, Inc. Now, I ask you. Are you all going to walk out of here today and be the CEO of you? Knowing that you have some responsibilities. Define who it is you want to be, put your team together, make the plan, and work the plan. And to think about your product and building your product, to think about your image and packaging, figuring out what that is, and marketing yourself. But the two most important factors are, one, to take responsibility for who it is you want to be. Otherwise, you've outsourced it. And two, spend time on you. Take 15 minutes a day to say, well, how'd yesterday go? 
What did I learn? How, am I, how did I move myself forward to today? Just take a, a bit of time. I have a story about one of the senior execs at Accenture. Many years ago, he talked about putting in his calendar me time. That me time said, I'm going to take an hour for me a week. And everybody around him knew that that time was sacred and that he it was, it was just sacred unless it was a life or death situation. I said, Kevin, what do you do? He says, well, I take Kevin down for a cup of coffee at McDonald's. And I think, I talked to Kevin, you know, and how'd you do this week, Kevin, and what are you doing, and how, how are your aspirations, et cetera, et cetera. So I saw Kevin a few months ago, and I said, Kevin, I tell this story about you all the time. And he's a very senior person at Accenture today. And he said, Susan, I just want you to know that that's still in my calendar. With everything that he's going on, is going on with his global responsibility, it's still on my calendar. The only difference is I go to Starbucks. So that's how important it is, and I think about it a lot, and I hope that you real, think about it for yourself and then figure out where you're investing your time and when to say yes and when to say no. Because that your time is your investment. And people are always going to say, Susan, I want some of your time. Well, when can I say no? And you can say no. Once I decided where it was I was going to go, I said I needed to get myself out of some of these committees that I'm on because they weren't contributing to where I wanted to go. Somebody wants some of my time, and I say, well, I'm sorry, but you know, this is where I'm going, and I don't see that there's a, a match here. So I'm sorry, but I just can't help you. So my, my point to you is I hope you'll do something different than today, than you d did coming in today about being the CEO of you. Can I see a show of hands about how many people are willing to accept the responsibilities of being the CEO? Oh, very good, very good. I'm pleased for that. Just remember that tomorrow, right? Okay, I, last, just one thought I would like to share with you. As a young girl as a mid, in the Midwest, all I could think about as my aspiration was to run this store, this clothing store in Galesburg, Illinois. Well, you know, today as I look back, you know, I, you know, really, my wildest dreams couldn't have expected what, I was, what I've been able to achieve and what I continue to achieve in my career. So I want you to have whatever you want. I want to help you make things happen for you rather than let things happen to you, like I did for myself, because I had no role models. There weren't, I mean, there were no other women partners. I had to, I helped mentor other women partners to show them that I wasn't a man in a skirt, that I could be a real female kind of person and I didn't have to walk and talk like a man. Sorry, men. But um, I, hope, I hope that you will Think about who it is you want to be because you can make it happen. I did. I proactively made my career happen. And that's what I wish for all of you. And if I can help you in any way, if I can be a member of your team, I'll give you my uh, information on my website in a moment, but I would love to hear from you and see how you're doing on making things happen for you rather than letting things happen to you and being the CEO of You, Inc. Thanks very much. Now, I believe we have time for some questions. So there are some people in the audience. And if you would please just uh, maybe introduce yourself sure. and uh, then give us your question. Hi. Uh, my name is Debbie Light. I am a product marketing manager, and I work on uh, AdWords. Upstairs, actually. Okay, great. <laughs> and um, my question is around the setting of your vision, the initial setting of your vision. I'm curious how it is that you went from having the goal of the, what was it? The, um, oh, the managing partner? Oh, no, sorry, no. the um, home ec. Oh, from home ec, right. To um, 
deciding that you wanted to be a mentor for women and help them achieve their dreams. Right. How I got there. Well, first of all, let me just step back and say, I just gave you a marketing opportunity. Debbie, I said to Debbie, I said, introduce yourself and, you know, say who you are because generally if women are in a group, one, they sit down, they don't stand up, and they don't introduce themselves. Now, you know, I may want to talk to her about what she's doing or whatever, but if I don't know who she is and what she's doing, I would never be, you know, go to her. Men will stand up and introduce themselves, I can guarantee you, 99% of the time. Because it's a marketing thing, they want everybody to know who they are and where they're from. So that's why I, I did that for you, Debbie. Um, how did I know? Well, first of all, I thought I knew when I went to the home ec school. Then I realized that I didn't want to, I, I knew how to thread a needle and I knew how to do all these things and I decided that's not for me. And so I got into the business school and I quite, didn't quite know then, but, and in that time, uh, I couldn't sign up, this is a little long ago, but I couldn't sign up for a, a recruiting interview unless they said they would interview women. So this was not that long ago, but a while ago. And so I had to write to everybody, including Arthur Anderson, and said, would you please interview me, including IBM. Would you please interview me? And, and I went to Arthur Anderson, one, because I had, a, I had a professor on campus. He was on my team, had a professor on campus that had new people there. He knew me, he got them to know me, and that was the job. I did get a job from IBM, but I didn't want to go to West Virginia, so I went to Chicago. So that's how I got started. And it was just kind of, you know, the roles and responsibilities that I had that got me up the ladder uh, to do, to end up where I, where I wanted to, where I ended up. But then, all this time, since I was so unique, I was mentoring women all the time. Because I wanted to bring women up. And I hope that each and every one of you, men and women, are helping the people below you come up. You're giving them the roles and responsibilities that they need to achieve in future, achieve in their careers. But it's just a natural thing. And I have this passion about getting more women into senior leadership roles and to get people up there to, so we have a more diverse group of people making the decisions for, the, for where this planet is going. We need a different kind of group. So that's my passion, my dream. Following my dream. Hi, um, thanks so much for coming to talk Thank to you. us. Thank you. It's really very interesting information in the book, and I'm definitely excited to take some of it on. Great. Um, my name is Yael, and I work in AdWords. I do a lot of project work. Okay. Um, and I actually had a question on some of the work that you're doing with women and helping them to become leaders. So personally, and I think for a lot of women, a huge issue is confidence, right. walking around talking to people, getting up to speak, and appearing confident, appearing in control of what you're saying, just general presentation. And I was wondering if you have any ideas for tips that women could take on to achieve more of that. Okay, great. You did, you were brave, you know, because I could tell you were a little nervous about getting up and answering, asking the questions. So that's a good step, and you did it, and you didn't stub your toe, you did a great job. Mm -hmm. Because you can do anything you set your mind to do. Now let me just tell you a story about my confidence because confidence is one of the, the most important things I think that get us down. That's why you need people to help get you back up if something wrong, ha or you think something wrong happened. The guy, somehow the guys will go out with a bunch of other guys They'll talk over a beer, they'll shoot the breeze, they'll go play basketball, they'll go whatever. They'll talk about what happened today, and tomorrow, you know, it's as if nothing happened. But we'll stew and we'll fret and we'll pull ourselves down and, oh, it's my fault and all of that. Well, I, I had that situation. Somebody asked me to go to Sao Paulo, and I said no. I said no. It was a job I'd never done before. I didn't want to go down there and screw up you know, in front of this guy. And so I said, no, I, I made up some idea why I couldn't go. And I said, but I'll get somebody to go. My mentor said, Susan, 
do you know what, what you did? I said, well, no, tell me. Because I just said I couldn't do it. And he said, one, Carlos wouldn't have asked you if he didn't think you could do it. So he had more confidence in you than you had in yourself. And he said, he wasn't going to bring somebody down there to screw up. He wouldn't let you. And besides that, they all went to Rio and the Amazon and all of that on the way back. And I missed out on that wonderful trip, and I've never been there. So that's when I learned about confidence and when to say yes and when to say no. The point is, say no if you absolutely, positively aren't the right person, and you know that. But say yes when, you know, it's you that's standing in your way, and that's where you build your confidence. I mean, even if, and I say, you know, when something happens, and I said, well, anybody die? No. Was there any real problem with what you did, or was it just a learning experience? And you come away with, you know, a whole bunch of confidence in yourself. So that's, you know, you really do have to reach out for things, you know, that somebody said the other day when I was telling this story, they said, well, it's the idea of a green light and a red light. You know, if you get this, if you are nervous about this in a confidence situation, and you see the green, or if you get a job and the green light goes on, you're confident. If the red light goes on, take it and build your confidence. So it's kind of that way, when to say yes, when to say no. And I say, say, if you're about to say no, say why. And say yes to build your confidence. But it is something that we need to get through. And that's why you have, need a mentor and people to talk to, people on your team to say, you know, to help you in situations where you need your confidence built. And I stand in front of the mirror every now and then and say, Susan, stand tall. You know, when somebody just got me, you know, got me down, stand tall. You can do anything you set your mind to do. You can do it. Don't let him get you down. Don't let her get you down. And don't worry about what happened yesterday. Learn from it and move on. Another question. Hi, Susan. Hi. Thanks for coming here today. Um, my name is Roxanne Cho, and I also work in AdWords. I'm an account optimizer. Um, you've obviously accomplished a lot in your life. What sorts of sacrifices do you think you've had to make to get to where you are? I know it's kind of a hard no, question. No, I mean, that, that's an interesting question, and I was asked that question at lunch today because I'm divorced and I have no kids. You know, so people would say, oh, well, you, you were successful because you didn't have a life. Well, I had a life. I mean, I still have a life. I have a very exciting life. There's lots of people that, you know, would like to have my life. The only thing that I've done is I've created my life, you know, without those parts in my, I have lots of really good friends, um, but I am divorced. And people would say, well, you're not a good role model, Susan, because I don't have a husband and I don't have children. Well, I'm a different kind of a role model. But I don't think of that as a sacrifice because I'm doing what it is I want to do. Um, I, you know, it's very interesting because when you create your life the way you want to create it, there's not a lot of sacrifices. You know, now, maybe if I had things to do over again, I might, I might reach out, you know, for a different kind of a end position than what I had. But, you know, when I started, you know, I was an assembler language programmer. That's how I started at Arthur Anderson. I used JCL, I knew the bits and the bytes and all of that real technical jargon. And when people know that today, they say, you? I mean, you're a big picture person. You're a strategic thinker, and I am. But I moved out of that, and, and I wanted to be a partner after somebody helped me. So, um, you know, did I miss out on anything? Maybe I missed out on, you know, time with my family, uh, somebody said, you know, Susan, if you had spent so much more time on your, on your personal life, like, you know, like you, than you are on your career, maybe things would be different. Well, I love what I'm doing. So I can't say, you know, I'm, I'm 
I feel bad for this one thing because I love what I'm doing. Any other questions? Hi, I'm LaDawn Gent. I'm an administrative assistant for four product managers. Great. And my question was, the last statistic I heard is that women make 70 cents for every dollar a man makes for an equivalent job. In your opinion, because you've already pointed out some things that men do better in the workforce, is are we doing this to ourselves or is it still a lot of the, the old traditions that you face that you you know, blaze the new trail for yeah. us for, how does that weigh out or is it, is it both? Well, I think uh, things are different, different today and I think it's higher than 70 cents on the dollar, but I, I'm, not, I'm not a real factoid person, you know, so somebody's, I don't know that for a fact, but my gut is that it's higher than that. But I do know that we don't ask for what we want. Men negotiate better than we do. Men negotiate a starting salary, you know, out of college better than we do because they know that that starting salary is going to, if it's down here versus up here, is going to impact them the rest of their life. Many of us go out and say this is our starting salary and don't think about, you know, well, what should it be and what is that impact going to be for the rest of my life. We're just happy to have a job and, and uh, you know, get the salary that we think is okay. But is it the best we could get? Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is that I don't know that we talk about going up the career ladder like the men do. I mean, I think the men think, you know, I'm in this for my career, whatever that is. And sometimes we don't have that same end in mind, you know, because we don't know about, you know, family and getting married and, and all of that. And I say, go for it wherever it is you want to go. You can get off the train anytime you want to. When somebody says, but Susan, you know, Accenture isn't a family friendly thing. Accenture is a wonderful company. But maybe, maybe it's not going to be the place for you, you know, when you have a family. But I say, are you engaged? Are you married? Are you pregnant? Why are you thinking about it now? Because things are going to change by the time that happens. So I think it's two things. We don't ask for what we want, and, and we're not as career focused to get up the ladder to get into the higher paying salaries that would impact that, uh, that factor, that percentage. Any other questions here? One more. How are we doing time-wise? One more. Hi, I'm Hi. Padmini. I'm the ambassador from the India office. Great. At where, where is that? Uh, from Hyderabad, India. Yeah. I've been I in India. Oh, okay. I went to Bangalore. I had to go see the Accenture facilities in Bangalore. Okay, that's great. I love great. your country. Okay, thanks. <laughs> and I should tell you that this is one of the most encouraging talks I have attended after coming here, and I'm so happy that oh, I attended. Okay, I'm getting goosebumps <laughs> about it. It's great. Thank you so very much. Yeah. I just wanted to know what are the criticism, what is any criticism that you faced during this phase of moving up the ladder? Because we often face a lot of criticism. Okay, she's doing that, she's doing this, and she's, okay, she's like this, she's like that, and X, Y, Z. So well, how did you face, right. and Criti can I know which is the worst, worst, if I can know, which is the worst criticism or negative comment that you have heard, and how did you face that? Well, I'll begin with the last part of it, because as a partner, I got a requires improvement evaluation, and that's, you know, that's not a very exciting thing. And uh, uh, I said, as I walked out, I talked to myself, you know, and said, he gave me a requires improvement? I mean, how can that be? I'm not requiring, I mean, going through my mind. I'll show him, which is what I did. But what didn't happen, and I provide this this information to you is when you get something like that, if you, when you get the criticism, make sure that you get an example. What is it that I'm doing? Let me, you know, show me. Because today, maybe it's because I've lost some of my, you know, some of this is way back in my database and I can't get it out. But today, I don't know exactly why I got that requires improvement. That should not be the case. I should know why. 
I should know what it is I need to do to make it happen, and what's the time frame I have to, um, to make the improvement, because I didn't know the answer to any of that. So what happened was I walked out of there thinking I had to do it by myself, you know, saying, Bill, will you help me? That's what I should have done, but I didn't. I walked out of there thinking I had to do it by myself, and I didn't realize what time frame I had to make it happen. And I said then that I, I said, Susan, you're going to get over this, and you're going to retire as an outstanding performer. Now, I wasn't exceptional, because that's the very few. But I was outstanding, and I made that happen. So that was kind of the worst thing, and to have it happen as a partner rather than early on. But you know, some of the very senior level people in Accenture today have had that kind of evaluation. And once they started talking about it, I decided I could talk about it. So I hope that helped. Thank you all. I do have one thing I would like to say, that if, if you would like to have me be on your team, I would be happy to do that. You can write me at susan at sbbinstitute.org. You can sign up for my monthly newsletter, Susan, or on www.sbbinstitute.org. And you, you can get my book through Amazon.com for those of you that don't have it. Um, and I do have business cards here also, if any of you would like to pick one up, and I will sign books um, as you leave today. So thank you very much. You've been a very responsive audience, and, and make things happen for you, and do be the CEO of you, Inc. Thanks again. <laughs>